Social distancing has made us all feel a bit out of touch with others and even ourselves. But why should we maintain a human connection to others and why is it important to teach our kids to do the same? We chat to Koketo Moeti, the founder of Amanda.mobi, who explains the importance of maintaining a human connection. Welcome to The Loft, Koketo. Good afternoon and yeah, good to be here with you. Now, with the hard lockdown that we all experienced, you found a need to teach your kids and others about the importance of interacting with our community, but in a good way. Tell us about what led you to that. So the kids and I were playing with a ball outside and the ball accidentally went outside of the yard. And of course, under normal circumstances, we would have opened the gate and raced to go get the ball. But given the current circumstances, instead, I wanted to go get a mask and ensure I can go safely outside. Because part of my role is modeling the behavior that I want them to adopt to keep themselves and others safe as well. And before I could go into the house to get the mask, an old man, who was walking down the street, passed by, grabbed the ball and brought it to the gate. Of course, as my kids started running towards the man, I stopped them, you know, and I politely asked the man to please throw the ball into the yard. And of course, the kids again tried to run to the ball. I stopped them and I wanted to give the ball a scrub. And of course, I couldn't tell the man's reaction to this because he had a makeshift mask on, right? And he couldn't see my smile as well. But nevertheless, the whole interaction felt so cold and unkind, you know? And one of the things that it forced me to reflect on was how do I teach the kids to continue to protect themselves and others, but how do I do it in a way that does not inadvertently teach them to treat people as a threat? I think this is particularly important in the face of an invisible virus, right, mm -hmm. where it's easy to see people as the problem, treat them as mere disease carriers, you know, risks to your health, and retreat into personal cocoons. Wow, this is seeming very challenging to be a parent during this time. Having to strike that balance is quite interesting. So how has lockdown and social distancing affected your kids and family? So um, my family, so the kids and I have all had um, health issues that have had respiratory consequences. But over and above that, we also have their great grandmother who now lives with us. And given her age and her underlying conditions, she's a high risk person. So in essence, my entire family is at quite a risk for COVID-19 related complications. So given this, of course, um, I took the kids out of school before the lockdown even started. And yeah, this is the longest they've gone without going home home, you know, in Mahiking, um, without seeing people, without seeing other children apart from each other, you know, and just again, the sense of um, isolation, you know, it was dizzying the speed at which we could be physically with people, but suddenly physical connection became a threat. So it's had a huge, huge impact on the household. I believe you have an amazing avocado tree. How have your kids given back to the community and how do they feel by doing a good deed? So we have a huge avocado tree that bears avocados all year round. And we have much more than we can eat, especially because the kids don't really like avocados. So under normal circumstances, I can share the bounty with people at my office and with our friends and so on. But suddenly this is taken away from us. So the kids decided to start packing them up and leaving them outside in the front yard for anybody to take as they pass by. And I think it was just so amazing for them to just see how people were taking these avocados and going, right? Mm. Um, and over and above that, we also do have a garage and we have no car. So we've been able to use our garage as a sort of um, food and personal protective equipment distribution facility over time. <laughs> and... Um, in, you know, it's just been their way. It's been phenomenal watching them think of ways in which they can stay connected with others. Yeah. And even though they can't go outside, you know, it's been fascinating to just watch them and their deep joy when they see people collecting, you know, whether the avos or collecting food or collecting this PPE. It does sound incredible to see how you'd be able to be creative, but also give back to your community. Now, what do you want your kids and others to learn during this time? Not just to remember to wash their hands and wear their masks. What more? 
So I really want my children to understand that this is a time when we as people need to show up for each other, right? There are so many people who are finding really creative ways to support each other. So I think about the community action networks in Cape Town, where unlikely groups of people have come together to meet local needs, right? I think about the women of um, Londani Lushaka, which is based in Alexandra, who together with volunteers and people donating food are feeding about 600 kids um, on a daily basis. And what I want my children to take away from all of this is that this is a moment in which it is possible to maintain existing connections with each other, but also forge new bonds, even in the midst of a global pandemic. Mm. And of course, yes, we need to be careful about physical connection. But at a time like this, you know, connections to each other remain crucial. They always are. But right now, they're even more important. And let's not forget that. Thank you so much, Koketso. It is Women's Month, so I want to wish you a happy Women's Month. I hope that you are continuing in your power, within your fierceness as the woman that you are in your community. We appreciate you, Koketso. Bye. Bye. Thank you. It's important to keep communicating with our family and friends. As they get lonely, you might feel like you feel lonely in a home full of others. You might feel that you want to give back to your community and chat about how they are coping and feeling during this time. And we want to maintain those connections safely and without fear.